All right, let's turn back now to today's governor's races in Virginia, also the one in New Jersey. Joining us now, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post, Eugene Robinson. Gene, good morning. We've been talking a little bit about Virginia this morning and just how close it's become. If you look at the polls, depending on which one you look at, it's two, three, four points. A marginal lead for the Democrat, Ralph Northam, there. What would a loss by the Democrat or even a two or three point win in a state that Barack Obama won twice, Hillary Clinton won just a year ago, mean to Democrats? What would it mean to Donald Trump? Well, a two or three point win would be a win. And uh, Democrats would take that. And um, I, I think uh, I, I actually do believe the polls in Virginia, they're usually pretty good. I, I think that's the most likely outcome is that Democrats, uh, the, that Northam does pull this out. Um, uh, and even if it's, uh, you know, it could be five votes, but Democrats want to win, uh, need a win. And if they get one, I think they'll be happy. If they don't, get a win, uh, it will be, uh, you know, it'll be a, a real blow to the Democratic Party. Uh, and there will be talk about what kind of candidate uh, Northam was and, and how awful and negative the campaign was. And by the way, you know, everybody in the, in the Washington, D.C. Uh, TV market will be uh, will be really glad that this race is over because the the television advertising has just been atrocious oh, um, um, and yeah. and ugly and you feel you know it's like walking through a sewer, but um, uh, but it's uh, but a loss would be uh, would be a blow um, uh, a real blow to the Democratic It'd Party that, that expects and needs to win this race. You know, uh, and, and Steve Kornacki, I, I I second what Gene said. A win is a win. If you win by one vote, that's a win. Donald Trump lost by over three million votes. He won. When you start talking about margins, ah, oh, but we only lost by... Losers talk about margins. A win is a win is a win. How important is this race for Democrats yeah, and as, they, as they move towards 2018? And, I, and, I, and I, I agree with that, too. And I think there's also a, there's a tendency here to over... Virginia is definitely trending from red to blue. We're watching that play out. But there's also a, a tendency to overstate how blue it's become. Uh, Hillary Clinton won last year with a Virginian on the ticket, Tim Kaine. The margin, you know, was six points. 2014, Mark Warner was reelected to the Senate by a fraction of a point. So this is still a very competitive state. When, that, when, when, by the way, when the final poll showed Warner up six Seven, eight, nine right. Points. Although that's now this is the interesting question when you, when you look at this this issue of polling and are they going to be off today and that's every Democrat's worst nightmare. I will say in 2014 there weren't that many polls that were taken overall because there was just this assumption that Mark Warner was going right. to win. This time we've had like a dozen in the last week. So this really would be one of those cases where you know we had you know all the polling autopsies after last November. We said what went wrong and you can really I think isolate what happened last November to a few of those states in the Rust Belt. Wisconsin. But boy yeah. if, if, if you were to wake up tomorrow when Ed Gillespie's the governor elect of Virginia, that is yeah. a different kind of polling failure. There'd be different kinds of questions. Well, and, 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 and I mean, what, one, one thing to watch for, too, as we watch the uh, returns tonight, is quite common in Virginia for the for the Democratic vote to come in fairly yes. late. Yep. Um, so it, it could, uh, you know, Gillespie could <laughs> appear to be ahead for a yes. good part of the evening and still lose this race. So as you, as you watch the returns, keep that in mind. Yeah, the stay, fact that we're having this conversation, Democrats. though, is just unbelievable. Yeah. Now, Democrats stay off the ledge uh, <laughs> until all the results come in because Democrats usually break late in Northern Virginia. Uh, New Jersey. Uh, this takes on added significance because uh, uh, Bob Menendez's trial is going to the jury right. and the next governor is going to decide who the next senator may be, uh, depending on what the jury says in New Jersey. Well, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting scenario. So you, look, here's the situation. Kim Guadagno is the lieutenant governor, the Republican. She's running. She's got three things going against her. They look insurmountable. It's a blue state. Chris Christie, her boss's approval rating is about 15 percent, and Donald Trump's approval rating is about 30, 35 percent in, uh, in New Jersey. So the, the good news for Democrats is they're not worried about losing this race today. The bad news is they have had this date circled on their calendar for a long time. Chris Christie's won two straight governor's races in New Jersey. Right. They looked at those poll numbers. They said, not only are we going to win, we're going to win in such a landslide, we're going to get swept into every office in this state. They've seen the polls tighten a little bit down the stretch, and now there's, there's a little fear among Democrats this might come down to single digits or something. But still, that's a good problem to have, I think, if you're a Democrat. In terms of that Menendez question, though, if Menendez gets convicted, first of all, we know he'll appeal, and we know based on the experience of Bob McDonnell, the former Virginia governor, there's a precedent where that appeal could succeed. So there's a real question 
here with Menendez. Remember, he's up for re-election next year. If he's convicted, A, do Democrats in the Senate stand behind him while he appeals? That could play out for months, and instead of voting to expel him, I think that's likely. But B, does Menendez actually push forward? This is the signal right. he has continued to send. Does he actually push forward and try to run for re-election in 2018? That's the question, and that's what would put Democrats in a real jam. Do they stand behind him then if he wants to be their candidate on the ballot, or do they move against him? All right, coming up, for more than a decade, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross has been telling Forbes magazine that he's a billionaire. But it seems that might not be completely true. We'll talk to the reporter who's been following the money next on on Morning Chill. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.